This is my boss locked Iron Man. Starting as a level three, I've been leveling up my account through fighting bosses and using their loot. I'm an Iron Man, so this means no trading with other players or using the Grand Exchange, but I have taken it a step further and can't buy items or pick them up. My goal is to obtain my best in slot gear that I'll have access to, with the final challenge being the Inferno, the hardest content in RuneScape. Previously, I camped all three wilderness bosses looking for the three Void Waker pieces, receiving the hilt from Ardio at 140kc, the blade from Calvarion at 988, but an update locking the singles versions behind the medium diary happened. So I had to finish the grind by killing Venonatus for the gem that I obtained on the 500th kc, unlocking one of the best special attack weapons in the game. With the resources gained last episode from the Wilderness Bosses, it's time to use them all up. I'm going to get many important levels and upgrades from this, so let's get it started. I'm going to start off with all my Dragon Bones I got from Calvarion, along with all the big bones I picked up for every kill on the Wildy Bosses, plus a few Dagonoth Bones I got while going for the Mud Battle Staff to use at Ardeo. That's the last of my bones used up, and I got to 74 Prayer and nearly 75. Now, when I unlock Rigor in the future, I'll be able to use it. With that done, it's time to move on to the next resource, which will be gold. From the Wildy Boss grind, I got 12,200 gold ore, which is going to be a lot of smithing XP. Then, a lot of crafting XP with the bars. The first big level for smithing coming in, that's 73 smithing. Now I can smith myself adamant bolts and then make some diamond bolts and ruby bolts E, which will both be massively helpful in all the future bosses I use range on. If a ruby bolt procs on a boss at full HP, then that's going to be about 100 damage. Safe to say that the days of the crystal bow are over. Just finish up making all the gold bars and I got all the way to 75 smithing and about 35% of the way to the next level. Now it's time to use all this gold and make gold tiaras. I can't wait to hit 74 crafting with this for a massive upgrade to the account. And from this bar right here, there is going to be one massive level coming in. 74 crafting. Of course, that now unlocks Dragonstone bracelets. This has been a very long time coming. So let me quickly make one. There we go. That's my first Dragonstone bracelet. Now let me enchant it and look at this stat difference compared to what Clank's gauntlets are. So it gives me plus four melee strength bonus on top of them and plus five to all combat styles besides magic and range with magic being plus three and range being plus seven. But it is huge. Let me take off these gauntlets so you can see the full stats. Like it's wild how much better this thing is. This over the gauntlets is already plus one max hit because it gets me an extra four melee strength bonus. And the attack bonuses that I get on top of this thing is just so much better as well. So anywhere for any combat style now, it is a combat bracelet only. And it is going to be really, really good. I still have a lot of gold left. 10,800 gold left. That's going to push me all the way up to 77 crafting. So then from there, I only need three more crafting levels to get another big upgrade, being a glory. So I don't know how I'm going to do that in the future. That's probably just going to come from many TOAs and also chambers when I get gold ore. But getting one massive upgrade is so good. That's 77 crafting. I'm done with all my gold bars now, and I'm not going to use up the rest of my supplies just yet. So it's time to bring the Void Waker out and use it on the first boss. You might be wondering where I'm going to be using it, and that's at Zemi. I did originally want the Void Waker for Bandos and was going to head back there when I got it, but I have a new plan. What I want from Zemi is the Staff of the Dead. This staff is going to be great for me. The Staff of the Dead has a feature where it lets you auto-cast Flames of Zamorak, something that God Staffs from the Mage Arena don't even let you do. This Staff also gives a 15% magic attack bonus and will let me hit 34s with Flames of Zemi and charge. 
Like Ivan's Blast, this spell also uses Fire Runes, but doesn't use charges from the Tome of Fire. So I will save Runes and Charges. And unlike Fire Wave, Flames of Zemi only uses one Air Rune instead of five. So I plan to use this on Zolra instead of Fire Wave, which will save me Runes and Pages. So the new goal is to get the Staff of the Dead at a rate of 1 in 508, and use this to achieve another best in slot, being the Serpalm from Zolra before I head back to Bandos. Or at least until I run out of food, or make a discovery that would make this grind easier. This episode has another RuneScape based sponsor, and it's Creator Crafted this time. Creator Crafted has some amazing LED signs that would look great in anyone's room. This is what mine looks like behind me. I chose the skilling icon because I like it the best, but look at all the other amazing designs from some of RuneScape's most iconic items. They even have some amazing OSRS themed mouse mats. Like, look at it. It's sick. It's got a carefully selected size and material, which guarantees smooth mouse movement and ample space. Plus, Christmas is coming up and these would make amazing gifts. If you have someone you know that likes old school RuneScape, or if someone asks you, what do you want for Christmas? Well, now you know. It's one of these bad boys. If this sounds appealing to you, then click my link in the description or use code ZayZ at checkout for 10% off. Every purchase really helps support the channel. So thank you to everyone who gets one with my link and thank you Creator Crafted. I've got my KC and it's time to enter Zemi. It's been a while, so I have forgotten my antidote, so I'm gonna get poison, so this kill's not gonna be great. But with the Void Waker being able to kill it so much quicker, it should hopefully go fine. So let's go in there and we'll go for the first kill. I'm still going with how I used to, wearing tank gear and I pray mage and piety and just go for it. So let's see how the Void Waker is actually going to perform. Already 40 damage on the first spec and a 52. You can definitely say it's good. Okay, definitely was not very easy when I was poisoned, but that's our first kill in a little while and it's a 20th kill. I thought I had more, but yeah, apparently only have got 20, but not too bad for the first attempt. So next time I'll remember to bring an anti-poison and the poison won't be doing 16 damage to me each tick. So that will be really nice. But with all the upgrades we're coming back here, it's definitely a lot better. I've got strength levels over last time I was here. I have the Void Waker, which did like 100 damage just in those two special attacks. And then I also have the Berserker Ring imbued. So I've definitely got a lot better gear and I cannot forget about this combat bracelet. So it should be going a lot better on average as long as I bring the anti-poison. Well, looks like I can still die here and run out of food when he's got 75 health left. So hopefully that's not too common and that's an outlier because he slapped me that time. Usually I was left with over 10 food, but yeah, he still had like a quarter HP left and he hurt. That kill there is kill number 10 since I came back. So I'm at 30 kills now. Kills have been looking like this every single inventory, kind of getting wrecked by him still. The Void Waker, of course, is still performing very nicely. So it's definitely helping me get some of these kills with the guaranteed like at least 50 damage that I do with these specs. So it's very nice. I don't think I've done anywhere below 60 damage with my two specs yet. So that is helping me a lot because the Fang sometimes can just non-stop miss. So I'm just going to have to keep doing this now. And it looks like I'm going to be getting five kills an hour here as well. But it's much better because I don't have to use two accounts like at Venonatus. So... Just going to enjoy my time and head towards the 508 drop rate for the staff and hopefully get it before that. I kind of forgot that this would be so good for super attacks. Whenever I kill Zemi and he decides to drop me super strengths, he also drops super attacks in one go. So anytime I get this, I get nine sips of super attack. That's good for nine kills since I'm only using one sip here. So I might actually be able to use super attacks for a lot of this grind and make it a fair bit more consistent because I still have kills where it goes like this, where I've only got two food left. That there is 50 kills at Zemi. It's going pretty well. I have only died one time in the last 30 kills and haven't had to teleport out yet from a kill at all. I'm also not killing the minions because it's saving me one and a half minutes each kill, which will add up to a lot of time saved by the time I get the staff. Well, that's the first unique, a Zemi Spear at 61kc. Pretty close to half the drop rate, so not 
too bad. It's going to be my best in-slot crush weapon, but besides that, I have the fang for everything else stabbed, so that's fine. Well, best in-slot crush weapon when I make it a haster. But yeah, currently just going to really sit there until later on until I need to use it for crush. Well, okay, kill count 70. We got another Zemi spear. That's definitely, yeah, whatever, I'll take it. You know, it's just an extra 3.2 mil, so that's something. Only nine kills after the first one and 75 prayer. I forgot that Ash was going to give me 75. So that's a good prayer level to get to. So that's good. Definitely the first time that happened. I didn't eat a single piece of food for that kill. Well, that's another Zemi Spear. I should have only have seen about one with this KC, but we've got three. So that's okay. It is still a one in one, two, eight. So this one is just a true extra now. The first Zemi Spear could be kept as a Zemi Spear and maybe used on Corporal Beast in the future because it is better than the Fang if you do lower its defense. The second one getting turned into a half start would be my best in slot. But for the third one, I don't actually need it because there's no way I'm ever getting to Hydra. There's just no way. So this one's just going to be an extra. I'll probably just drop it over to my other account later on. I'm still happy to see Uniques. It makes this grind feel a lot better. And that kill right there is kill number 200. So not going too bad still, getting six kills an hour now that I don't actually kill the minions, which does help a fair bit on the time. But I do have an issue. I um, don't have that much food left. I've got just under 500 manta rays and 300 sharks. That might look like a lot. Well, it just doesn't. But I started with close to 400 sea turtles and... I think over 500 sharks and I had close to 1,500 manta rays. Plus I had 500 dark crabs as well. And I started on 20 kills. So in 180 kills, I have gone through a lot of food. I would say on average, it's about 10, maybe a little bit over 10 food per kill. So it looks like the grind is going to come to an end soon. And by soon, I think I can get up to about 256kc, which if I do still have food, that's where I'll stop because it is half the drop rate of what the staff is. So I'll try and go up to there and that's where I'll stop for now. Oh, I didn't expect the collection log because it was a blue beam, but that's a steam battle staff, also a 1 in 128. So we were getting up there for the drop rate of it, but of course I did receive three spears that are the same drop rate. But that is another collection log. I honestly don't think this is going to have a use for me at all, but I have it now, I suppose. Why is it every time that I get one of the uniques, I just get another one like straight after? This is 10 kills. 10 kills after I got the last Steam Battle Staff. Oh, wow. Back to back with the Steam Battle Staff. I've got my first God Sword Shard. I thought one of them should be coming in soon because I'm getting close to on rate for hitting one God Sword Shard, along with all the kills I've done on the minions. But yeah, that's the first one. I'm actually not too far off the smithing level now five levels until i can actually make the blade so if i did hit god sword two and one i wouldn't be that sad about it anymore because of course then i could try and push to get enough smithing supplies to make my first defense lowering special attack weapon being the bandos god sword but let's keep continuing on a lot of stuff's happened today i've got all these things in the just the past three or so hours today so it's good to see some drops Ah, I thought this would happen eventually. There's finally the Imp Champion scroll. Uh, it took its time because I'll show you my KC on the side right now. That was at 11,241. So that's just a, just a couple KC in there. But that's the second Champion scroll I've had on the account. Obviously, the other one was the giant Champion scroll I got from the Black Knight Titan a very long time ago. So having two is kind of good, and I did expect this from the grind. I just went a little bit over two times dry for it. So hopefully bringing this in brings some good luck at Zemi, and I get the staff now. And this kill right here is kill number 254. That is now halfway towards the Staff of the Dead. So Staff of the Dead is a 1 in 508 drop rate. So we are halfway there. But the issue with doing any more kills now is I do not have that much more food. My only food that heals me for 20 is sharks and I have gone through all the rest of what I had. So it has gone through a lot of food doing these Zemi kills. So I'm going to have to stop here, but it was really good to do. It was only about six kills an hour, which is just a little bit faster than Venonatus, but it was just so chill, just walking in there, killing some imps, killing Zemi, and just repeating. It really wasn't that bad. So this amount of kills probably took me about 50 hours. 
but it really wasn't too bad. So not horrible, not too bad. But I do have some more plans for some of the other resources that I'm going to use up from the wilderness bosses. So I'm going to get started on that. With the Void Waker fully tested out on Zemi, it's time to use up some other resources from the wilderness bosses. What I'm going to start with is the Herb Law supplies. The wilderness bosses drop a lot of these. So hopefully I get to a pretty good Herb Law level from using all these up. That's 62 Herb Law. This level doesn't unlock anything, but I am out of herbs and supplies that I can use just one level off being able to make super restores. But I have found a solution. The only way to boost my herb lore is this beer I've made right here. This is a green man's ale. It boosts your herb lore by one, which will put me up to 63 herb lore and allow me to make super restores. The easiest way for me to get prayer restore potions since the primary herb and secondaries come from bosses very frequently. First, I'm going to make a beer barrel in my house and fill it with Green Man's Ale. Now I have unlimited ale and not just eight. I just have to make my potions in my house if I want to boost for them since I can't take the ale out of the house. But I'm more than happy to deal with that because otherwise it was back to Wintertop for more Herb Lore supplies to hit 63 Herb Lore naturally. There it finally is, 63 Herb Lore. It's a level I've been wanting for a very, very long time. Obviously because prayer potions, it's hard for me to make them because snake grass seeds only really come from winter tot or from the giant mole for me. And I really can't get that many per hour. But on the other hand, making these super restores with snapdragons, red spider eggs, I can get them from Seracnus venenatus. Venenatus especially can drop me up to like 150 snapdragons. So... This is the best form of prayer restore for me, so it's very, very good that I have unlocked this. Of course, I've been making them with boosting them inside my house, and I do have a fair few now, but just having the level to be able to make them is very huge. Now I'm going to use up the rest of the 609 Snapdragons I've got here and the extra, like, close to 50 unfinished potions and have, for once, a massive stack of prayer restore potions on my account. This is already the most I've ever had. I think I've maybe had a hundred prayer potions before, but yeah, this is already pretty damn huge. This is a huge Herb Law level coming in. That's 65 Herb Law. It means two things. I can now use my house and I can boost one Herb Law level and start making my own super defenses, which will be great for any grind because I notice how good they were on Zemi. But the other good thing I can do is if I click here to continue, I can now make mid-strength Buchu potions. Buchu potions are used in Chambers of Zarek, and they're the ones that I make brews and super restores with. 65 Herb Law was the level I was waiting for to actually do Chambers and get my first KC there. Because potions before this healed barely anything, but the ones now heal so much more. So it's definitely the time that I can actually start going there. So I think after I finish up making these potions, I think it's time to go back to where we first started this series and get our first KC at Chambers of Zarek. Just before we head off to Chambers, I'm just making the first Addy Bolts on the account, which I then made into Ruby Bolts and enchanted them. Now that I'm here, it's time to reset the raid until I finally find what I'm looking for because I want a pretty easy raid layout with some specific rooms. I got very lucky and got this raid super early, so let's get this underway. Before I come back next time, I need to imbue a salve emmy so it works with range, because I'm only using a power emmy and it kinda sucks on these guys. Alright, so that's already the first floor done. It was just the... It was really just the mystics that I had to do on this floor, because if I look at my layout, it was mystics, crabs... And then it's Shamans, Mudderdile, and Thieving on the lower floor. So here, I'm going to be making all my potions with these herb patches here. And I'll be using the trees there and filling up them with water and making my own super restores and brews for this raid in here. Which means I don't have to use any of my super restores and I don't have to use any more of my food. Because I can just use the brews from in this raid. So this is why I wanted something like this early. Something I can just do one combat room and then have this room here because then I don't have to use up any of my supplies. So now I'm going to go kill the scavenger and stack up a bunch of supplies so I can make a bunch of potions in here. 
This clip started a little late, but I just finished the Muttadar room and got two Overload pluses from killing both of them, along with some Prairie Enhance pluses. I can't make these potions myself since I need 90 Herbor to make the Overloads and 78 to make the Prayer Enhance. So getting a Muttadar room will be essential so I can have two Overloads for the Om fight instead of some other combat room that would only give me one. But... With this room, that's the last of my combat room, and I have done a lot of potion making in the last room, so I won't have to make any more potions. But I will show you all the potions that I've managed to get as well inside my storage. Alright, that's the thieving room done, and let me show you all the potions that I've made. So I have myself 37 super stores, and I've got myself 77 brews along with the extra two overloads that I have and two prayer restore, like prayer enhanced potions which, as I said before, restore prayer over time. So, this will definitely be enough for me in Ulm. I'm also up to Ulm because this was the last room of my layout. If I look in the chat, if I do exclamation mark layout, I can see the layout in the whole of the raid like I have just there, and that shows me everything that's happening in the raid. And as you can see, thieving is the last room. So, once I go through here, and then I, this is my last resource room, and this is where Olm is down. So it's finally time to take on Olm for the first time on the account. After many times coming in here for many different kinds of training and stuff like that, it is definitely something to take on the final boss in this raid. I haven't died yet, but I will definitely be dying in a second when I go into Olm because I have to basically suicide in some potions because I don't have Staminus on my account. I have a couple, but they all came from Dr. Jekyll. And with the methods here to kill Ulm, you need run energy so you don't take as many hits. So I kind of just have to tank a lot of hits and just keep hitting him down. When I die from Ulm here, I will lose less points because I have a smaller amount of points. If I had more points, I'd lose a higher percentage of them. So this is always the better way to go. But now I'll just die and we'll come back in here and we'll start this for real. So once I drink these, it's time to head into Ulm and it's really time to start and hopefully play semi all right. But this is going to be a long Ulm fight because look, I don't have that good a gear. Having a Star for the Dead would have made this much easier, but what can you do? I don't have any more food and I didn't get it. Let's stop stalling and go in for the first time. Before I enter Ulm, let me just say he has a lot of mechanics. If I wanted to talk about them here, this video would be 10 minutes longer because he has like 12 different attacks he can do. But to simplify, I'll be either praying range or mage because his standard attacks can be either of those two styles. And I'll just be swapping prayers to whatever my armor lacks defensively. And for the other 10 special attacks he can do, I'll just talk about some of them during the fight. So this is one of the mechanics I need to run energy for. I got the portal all the way on this hand and I have to run over to the other side of the room. So that's why I can't really do any of the mechanics to dodge the hand because it's just not worth it. Because running out of run energy means I am just going to take damage whenever the portal comes up, which is a fair amount of damage at the end of the day. When the changes come through in the future and they do make that portal spawn closer to the side you're actually on, that's going to be very handy because god damn, when you're over here and all of a sudden it spawns and it's in this corner, you're guaranteed to take at least 15 damage or sometimes 30 like I just took. Alright, that's our first overload run out, so we've already been doing this fight for 5 minutes, so yeah, that's kind of rough. 5 minutes and we haven't even finished one set of hands, that is... Very rough. I'm probably going to be doing a lot of this fight without an overload then, or I'm going to have to die halfway through and go get myself the other overload out of the chest. All right, that should be... Yep, that's the first hand down, so that's good. Now we just have to focus on the melee one. There we go. That's the first phase of it down. Now he's going to swap sides after he does his little falling rock thing. Now we just have to do the same thing over again on the other side.
Olm definitely has a lot of mechanics to dodge, but once you kind of do a KC or a couple KC, it's pretty easy to learn with the other PVM in the game. But there is definitely a lot to look out for, and with how much I have to drink potions, I'm bound to get hit by some of it, because I am definitely looking at my inventory a lot. Because these potions heal nowhere near as much as what the best ones do. So I am definitely chugging through potions. Like, that's a full inventory of potions that I bought in. There's not that many left now. Like that, he made me turn off my prayers and did crystals under me at the same time. So definitely a lot you can get comboed out from here. And that that he just chucked out over there is a bomb that I have to watch out for now. So as long as I don't stand near them, I am all right. That's the last of my potions I just had to pick up from the ground. So yeah, it's uh, it's definitely going to be another death on this run through. That's our overload out again. So it's time for the last sip. There we go. That's the second phase down. Now he's going to shoot down his little rocks again. So if we just dodge these, then we can get onto the third phase. And then after we kill the hands one more time, we're onto the final phase for him. All right, we're onto the final hand phase, that is. So this one, we're going to have to kill both hands at the same time. Not exactly the same time. They have a little bit of a period where they're regenerating. So we just have to get both hands down relatively low. And I'm uh, basically out of food. So that's always good too. All right, now I'm officially out of food and nearly out of super restores too. So I'm just basically going to have to die and do as much damage as I can to these hands, which is good. And then when I do die, come back in here with some more food and everything. Well, this is a great time for him to do the fire attack because I can't get out of this. So just going to have to eat that damage, die and re-gear. So we go down from 17,000 points down to 10,000 in the corner. But it's to be expected, really. So let me go down, get some more potions and we'll go straight back in. I'm unsure of if I want to die again with supplies on the ground or if I just try and go through again without dying because I've got to go through a whole nother hand phase again and after that I have to then go through the phase where I've got to shoot his head. I think I'm gonna have to die again with supplies on the ground. So I'm gonna ditch all my stuff and we're just gonna have to die again, unfortunately. So it's just good to know for the future raids that I will probably have to die twice and get that many supplies on the ground before I can get a successful run through. So we'll die with all our potions here and then reset, come back in and be good. So this time we go from 10,000 down to 6,000. So we only lost 4,000 points there instead of the 7,000 we lost last time we died. Okay, really important we don't kill the melee hand here, otherwise it will regenerate all its HP, but I can't hit that high. So now we move on to the mage hand, and that should be pretty all right, I suppose. Oh my god, my overload just ticked down at the right time, then it saved me from that bomb, I didn't even see it. Man, this phase is being so unkind to me. I honestly think I'm going to die again, because he's just fucking hammering me. Yeah. <sighs> He's being so mean. I can't believe I forgot my watering can so I could get out of the fire. That's really bad. All right, that's the hand dead. Now I've got to focus on this one. All right, now I'm in the last phase. Oh, you bitch, man. I'm dead. That was one of the worst fire timings he could have possibly done just then. I'm going to walk out of this raid with like 5,000 points. I'm going to make 10 more potions. I need to make a couple more brews and super stores. That last hand phase was so horrible. I really need to remember my watering can next time because then I can save on so much damage. And I keep saying about this watering can, I don't think I explained it. A watering can is a one slot thing that I can fill it up with eight uses of water and that can douse the fire for me eight times. So it's just the most efficient thing I can put in my inventory for that. So yeah, I'm going to have to try and remember to bring that next time because it would have been a big help. All right, I've made some more potions and I've moved out my gear out of my inventory because since I'm on the final phase, just the head, I don't need anything else but range. So... I only have a full inventory of potions and I made myself some twisted potions. 
These are just a range potion with some extra defense added in. But let's go back in and give this last little bit a try. Thank God, first Ruby Bolt's back. Yes, second, thank you. That's actually making my life so much easier. Ah, oh, shit. I wasn't watching my health. I don't know if I need more potions or not, because there's just barely, because I'm going to have to pick them up off the floor. Yeah, I'm not going to risk it. We've already done two hours. What's, a th <laughs> What's an extra 10 minutes of prep going to do for me? All right, round three. Let's go for this. Last one damage. There we go. We've done it for 4,300 points. Do we get a purple? Of course not. A 1% chance for a purple here is something like 8,700 points or so. So we got about half of that. So we had like a 0.5% chance of getting a purple. But we have our first raid completion. Solo of one hour, 57 minutes. I do know some things I can definitely improve on. I had to do a raid on the boss account first to truly know what I needed for this raid. And now I have a much better idea of what I need for Om. I'm probably going to suicide two deaths at the start and get two lots of supplies on the ground. And there is a few other things that I can improve on myself while doing the kill. But a few other things that I have learned while doing it with how slow some of these kills are. So let's see in the chest. Look, there is still some good things off the normal loot table that I can get from this chest. So I am hoping for some of that. If I can get Saltpeter and it gets me enough to get 100% Hosidia's favor, that would be great. I think I need like another 200 more or something. And then just any of the herbs that are hard for me to get, like Iritz or Aventos, would be super nice. And yeah, we may as well just loot it. Soul runes and some rune arrows. Honestly... Not that bad of a loot for how little points I had. Nearly 100k in loot for 4.3k points. So really not that bad at all. Herbs is definitely the one thing that I do want. And of course, silver and gold ore would still be good to get my crafting up even higher. But that is the first KC that we have at Chambers. So now I can say I have one KC. The place where we started off all the way back in episode one has now been conquered. Now I can say I have a 1kc here and I have 1kc, well I have two entry mode kc at Theatre of Blood and I have 12 completions of Tombs of a Masket. But our first normal completion of Chambers of Zarek. Now we are working our way towards at least some uniques from here, which... You know, some of them would be uh, pretty helpful. But getting our first KC is pretty huge here. I know the improvements I can make to the account now. And then the poll for all this stuff that can change in the future will definitely help my account. So I know what I have to do to get set up to make this even better. And it's not that many items. So I'm going to have to start working on getting some new items. And then come back here maybe when the changes are done. <laughs> 